Okay, welcome. This will be a series of presentations looking at the ingredients behind severe storm forecasting. We are considering moisture, instability, vertical shear, and lift. This will be the first in the series looking at the air mass modification and return flow cycle and how that applies to severe storm forecasting. Okay, key elements in this process, really there's two things that you need to know. It would be the, how the air mass modifies over the warmer underlying ocean surface, and then where's the air coming from and going to, so the air mass trajectories. Those are the two key elements, and if you can keep track of those, you can make some pretty powerful statements about what the moisture return cycle will look like as the air mass returns inland ahead of the next synoptic system. Okay, just wanna give a little bit of background on the diurnal, or not so much diurnal, but the annual cycles of sea surface temperature in the Gulf of Mexico basin. One thing most people, if you don't think about it, the heat capacity of water is much higher than air. It takes a long time to cool the ocean down. In this case, I've put an arrow highlighting. This is the coolest temperatures average for the Gulf of Mexico basin, occurs in February to early March. So it takes the entire winter season for the water to cool down to its coolest temperatures. And then if we continue down at the bottom, these are interannual variations in the water temperatures. And I've highlighted in the blue belt there at the bottom, there's only about a one degree C variation in the sea surface temperatures mean for the whole basin from year to year. So you can see the water temperatures don't vary greatly. It's about two Fahrenheit is the biggest difference you see from one year to the next. So in general, it's the response to the change in the sun angle and the cumulative effect of multiple frontal intrusions over the course of the winter. Okay, now the importance of the underlying ocean surface is this drives the air mass modification process. So I've got a sea surface temperature plot here and what we can do is if you assume that the air and the underlying ocean come into an equilibrium state, you can actually use the water temperatures to estimate the dew point temperatures in the boundary layer that the underlying ocean will support. And that's just a balance of the sensible and latent heat fluxes from the ocean upward and the mixing of dry air downward into the boundary layer from aloft and then radiation. So when you balance all these processes, you can come up with kind of a mean observed equilibrium state where the temperatures near or slightly below, the air temperatures near or slightly below the ocean temperature and the relative humidity is on the order of 80% in the boundary layer. So when you do this, we come up with the so-called equilibrium dew point. And what I can do is actually relabel the sea surface temperature contours as dew, potential dew points. So what you're doing here is you're saying, okay, water temperatures in the low to mid 70s support dew points in the mid 60s. That would be the Northern Gulf of Mexico. And if you move down to the orange area, which would be water temperatures 27 degrees centigrade or 80 Fahrenheit, supports dew points in the low 70s. Generally, when the temperatures of the water get in the 80s, which is characteristic of mid to late May through at least early October, that's maritime tropical air mass and the, the modification cycle is not so much relevant. So this is mostly a cool season process we're looking at. And if you just look at this plot, this is pretty consistent from year to year. We're looking at just, are we getting air that's being modified over the northern part of the Gulf Basin or the southern part or the Caribbean Sea? Okay, here's a frontal intrusion from this past November, just to illustrate the process. There's nothing special about this one. It just shows an example of the air mass modification process and the return flow cycle of prior maritime tropical air. So if we look down, it's a relatively moist air mass down in the Caribbean into the Southern Gulf of Mexico. The frontal zone is marked by the cloud band. And you can see in this case, we have northerly winds across the Northwestern Gulf of Mexico, evidence of cold air damming down into the west central and southwest Gulf Basin just east of the mountains in northeast Mexico. So I've highlighted there the, a snapshot of the streamline. So the air is coming out of Louisiana and Texas toward the south. Air-sea temperature difference is about 15 degrees and that's looking at the buoy observations out here, the cyan observations. I know they might be hard to see. Water temperatures are in the upper 70s to near 80. So this is a November case, and then the air temperatures above that are in the 60s. So it's that temperature difference that drives convective mixing and the upward flexes of heat and moisture. We go 24 hours ahead. The front has moved to the southeast across Florida. It's looked like it's slowing down in the southwest Gulf of Mexico, and you notice that the streamlines or snapshot trajectories have changed from coming out of the north to now the flow is coming off the northern Gulf Coast and out of the northeast. So we're already getting a component of onshore flow in South Texas. 
and the air-sea temperature differences are, have re been reduced by about 5 Fahrenheit over the course of the previous 24 hours. And if you look at the character of the clouds out here, this sort of cellular stratocumulus configuration denotes ongoing heat and moisture fluxes. So it's where the modification is most active, you will see that sort of cloud structure pretty continuously. We continue to the next day, now we're back into the return flows phase, and this is a case where air-sea temperature differences have been reduced, trajectories still coming off the northeast Gulf Coast, arcing around and coming back into South Texas. So at this point, this is a modifying air mass returning, and with time, the frontal zone has washed out. We have the old maritime tropical air mass and this thick green contour or upper 60 Fahrenheit dew points from the Bay of Campeche into the Western Caribbean Sea. So you would think over time, you're going to see increasing moisture into South Texas. And I'll illustrate that with a series of soundings of what this process looks like. So this is just to set the stage and we're gonna jump to some skew T diagrams to look at how the soundings change and what that says about the moisture return. So this is the offshore flow phase. You noted it was coming, this is the sounding from Slidell, Louisiana. This is day one of the day behind frontal intrusion and the next day. Notice there's relatively little change in the profile. It's not terribly cold and the cool air mass is about the same depth, which extends here somewhere below 850 millibars. So focusing on that, the offshore flow is not changing too much over time. What I've done here, this is a boundary layer lapse rate. I'm just assuming if you take the upper 70 degree ocean temperatures that are present offshore over the northern Gulf of Mexico and you mix heat upward, this is a general guesstimate of the lapse rate that you would get. So this tells you what the boundary layer might look like once you modify this profile over the ocean with no other changes going on. Okay, now let's jump over to Brownsville. This is further to the west uh, in deep south Texas. This is the uh, initial offshore flow phase, similar depth to the cool air. Again, this isn't particularly cold front for November, but this same process applies in all of these cases. So we look, there's uh, day one into the initial modifying return flow. This is the dew points in the 50s, and there's our mixed layer, and it's warmed compared to the previous day, so you see the shift to the right in the temperatures and the moisture. This is the initial return flow, but this is a partially modified air mass for across the northern Gulf of Mexico. We go to the following day and we see continued warming and moistening as trajectories come, instead of coming in from the east-northeast, now it's coming from the southeast. It's a warmer ocean surface, higher temperatures and dew points. And I just overlay that first guess at the lapse rate for the modifying air coming off the Louisiana coast and it looks an awful lot like the sounding at Brownsville. So this is about 48 hours into the process. You see that you could already estimate reasonably accurately what the profiles will look like two days later when it comes into Brownsville. And this is without using a numerical model or any other sort of crutch. You can just apply the conceptual model yourself. And then finally we come into Brownsville and we have the moistening. Now we have dew points in the 70s. You notice the, I plot that same mix layer, now the Temperatures and dew points have actually shifted to the right. This is the old maritime tropical air mass. So we've gotten past the modifying post-frontal modification process, and this is the tropical air that was preceding the front is now starting to return back into South Texas about 72 hours later. Okay, so we'll just summarize this. Again, the air mass modification is a multi-day process. You need to know primarily where's the air coming from, what are the underlying ocean characteristics, and then you can estimate what the character of the returning moist layer will be. So things like the depth of the cool air intrusion, the underlying ocean state, and the change in the surface trajectories over time are all important. And if, if you can master those processes, then you'll have a pretty good guess at what the return flow moisture will look like without even resorting to a numerical model forecast. And this gives you the chance to judge the quality of say a model forecast by applying a conceptual model to the whole air mass modification cycle.